Hello and welcome to yet another tutorial by Davies Media Design. My name is Michael Davies and in today's tutorial I'll be giving you an in-depth look at the text tool. Before we get into this tutorial, I want to direct you guys over to my website at daviesmediadesign.com. As always, we have tons of GIMP video and text tutorials on here, so definitely check that out. You can also enroll in our best-selling GIMP 2.10 photo editing course from beginner to pro photo retoucher on Udemy. And you can support our channel and help us grow by becoming a patron on Patreon and get some awesome GIMP extras in return. And I'll include a link to this as well as all the relevant links from this tutorial in the description of the video. So for this tutorial, I'm going to be using, of course, the latest version of GIMP, which at the time of this tutorial is GIMP 2.10.8. But the text tool is a very commonly used tool, and you can start by accessing it over here in your toolbox. You can also hit T on your keyboard. That's the shortcut key for the text tool. I've already gone ahead and typed up some text here, and this is right here. This is a layer that has some effects on it, so this isn't a text layer right now. So let me just go ahead and hide that layer. And what you want to do to start is you want to click on your canvas and you'll see these four little boxes here that indicates that you are about to start typing some text. And with my caps lock key on, I can go ahead and type my text, which in this case will be Davies Media Design. And you'll notice that while I was typing my text, the text box just went along with that text. So let me back it up here and start over. So you'll see that right when I create my first letter, the text box will just expand to fit that first letter. And as I type more letters, the text box is just continuing to expand with the letters. The reason it's doing that is because the text box is a dynamic text box by default. So anytime you just click once on here, this is going to create a dynamic text box that is going to move with the size of your text. Let me just click on that new layer I just created and delete that in my layers panel. We're gonna go over the text layer in a second here. So a dynamic text box is the default when you're using the text tool, but let's say I delete all this text here, so I'll hit my backspace key there to delete my text. So instead of just typing right now, let's say I click on one of these corners and drag this out because I want my text box to fit or I want my text to fit within this text area right here. Now you'll see that as I type my text, instead of the text box moving along with my text, it's just going to type my text within this new text box I've created. So this is a fixed text box. So let's say I continue to type and I type in GIMP tutorials. You'll see that that will automatically go to the next line because it's trying to fit the text in the text box. And if I continue to type, you'll see that this starts to get cut off here by the text box. What I can do is I can elongate this text box like this. So just clicking on the bottom of my text box and dragging this down. And now that is going to fit all my text within this fixed text box here. So those are the two types of text boxes found in GIMP. Let me just delete all my text here and hit the backspace key. And let me come back over here to my layers panel and delete that text layer. So starting over with the text tool, when I click on my composition and I type that text, and this is again a dynamic text box now, over here we are going to create by default a text layer. So this text layer is over here in the layers panel and this is just telling you that this is editable text and it contains text data within this layer. So I can always come back to a text layer and with my text tool highlight this text and make changes to the text. We're going to get into what happens when a text layer becomes a regular layer like what you saw here with the original text layer at the beginning of the tutorial. But for now, just know that when a text layer is showing up over here in the layers panel, it just means that this layer contains text data and that data can be edited or in other words, your text can still be edited. And you'll notice here too that the name of your text layer is by default going to take on your first line of text. So in this case, because Davies Media Design is my first line of text, that is going to name my text layer Davies Media Design. I can always come back here and click on this and just rename this text layer. So for instance, I can name this text if I want and that's just like any other layer in GIMP. But I'm just gonna change this back to Davies Media Design with the caps lock key on. So there are two options for making changes to your text. The first one is the text tool options right here below your toolbox. So this area is your toolbox, this area is the tool options. So when you have your text tool selected, it's gonna bring up your text tool options below here. The other option is this floating box right here. And this is known as the text toolbox. So this is a semi-transparent box that's going to display just above the new text box that you created. And we'll get into that a little bit later, but for now I'm gonna come over here to my text tool options. So one main difference between these two options for editing your text is that when you're using the text tool options, you don't have to have your text selected here and you can always tell your text is selected when there's those yellow boxes around your text. 
On the other hand, if you are using this text toolbox up here, you do have to have whatever text you're trying to change selected before you can make those changes. So I'm gonna start over here with our tool options, our text tool options, so I don't need to select this text. It's just going to make changes to everything within the text box here. So for starters, if I wanna change the font, I can click on here and I can manually type my font name. So let's say I know that I wanna change this to Arial. You'll see that as I type Arial, it'll finish it for me and it'll also display the various Arial options here. So let's say I wanted to go with Arial Heavy, I can click that and now we've changed our font. You can also use what's called the font selector by clicking this font button here. So when I click on that, that's gonna bring up our font selector dialog here. So within this dialog, you've got all of the fonts that are found within your GIMP. So either the fonts that come with GIMP by default or the ones you installed. And I do have a tutorial on my website on how to install custom fonts. But you also see down here, you can decrease or increase the size of the font preview. So on the left side here, you've got a preview of what your font should look like. And then on the right side, you have the name of that font. So you can increase or decrease that preview size. You can also change this from a list view, which is what this is set up as now, to a grid view. So let's say you only want to be able to see the previews of the fonts. You don't want to see the font names. You could set that to the grid view and then increase the size of those previews. So that's just a customization you can have in GIMP. I'm going to change this back to the list view because I do like the list view a little bit better. And then right here you have the option to open up the font selection dialog window. So when I click on that, that is gonna open up my fonts here as a dockable dialog. So for me, this opened up my font selection dialog window with some of my other dockable dialogs up here. For some of you, it may open it up out here like this as a floating dockable dialog. That's what makes these dockable is you can always just move them around and place them kind of wherever you want. But in this window, it allows you to more easily scroll through these fonts. So it's just a little bit of a faster way to scroll through the fonts and test them out on your active font here or on your active text. So I'm just gonna come back up here to this Agency FB Bold Condensed font. And I believe this is a font that I may have downloaded separately. Uh, if that's the case, I'll include a link to the free font download. All right, so next you can adjust your size using the size option here. So right now this is set to 150 and the units right here are set to pixels. So you can change the units if you want. And then you can use the up or down arrows to increase or decrease the size of your font. You can also manually type in the size of your font. So let's say I want this to be 200 pixels. I can type 200 here, hit the enter key, and that will change the size of my font to 200. Below the font size, you'll see a checkbox here called Use Editor. If I click on that, that's gonna open up the GIMP text editor. This is sort of the old school way of editing text within GIMP. So what I can do here is I can type some more text if I want, and you'll see it'll show up over here in my text box. And because this is a dynamic text box, this will go off the page. If I highlight this and hit the enter key, you'll see that'll start a new line for me. And I'll put my caps lock key on and just type GIMP tutorials. So you can edit your text within this text editor here. You should also be able to do things like change the size of the font and change the actual font type here. But as you can see here, this doesn't really work the way it's supposed to, so it's a little buggy. And that's one reason why I don't recommend using this. Another reason is just that I think the on canvas editor is a little bit easier anyway. It's a little bit more intuitive and it's just the newer way of editing your text within GIMP. So I'm just gonna close this down and control Z to undo all that. Below the use editor checkbox is another checkbox called anti-aliasing. So this is going to smooth your font. So let's say I hold control and scroll in here. If I uncheck anti-aliasing, you'll see our font becomes a lot more pixelated. It becomes a lot blockier and looks like a lot lower quality. So the anti-aliasing is just going to apply a smoothing effect to your font and make your fonts look a little bit smoother. Hinting is supposed to also work on the quality of your font. So if I hover over here, it says hinting alters the font outline to produce a crisp bitmap at small sizes. So this is used when you have a smaller size text. So let's say we set this to 10 as our text size. And I'm just gonna hold alt and move this text a little bit over here. So if I hold control and scroll in a little bit to zoom in on my text, this should in theory make our text a little bit more readable at smaller sizes. So if I set the hinting to full, you'll see it did change that a little bit. So if I zoom out a little bit, I am zoomed in a lot right now, so that's why this looks so bad. Uh, but this, you'll see this does change the font here, and this is supposed to make your font a little bit more clear when you're using smaller font sizes. I'm just gonna set this to none for now, and I'm gonna come back here and change my size back to 200, and then hold control and zoom out there. 
And unfortunately this was set to a fixed text box size. So let me just come down here and actually change this to dynamic. And we're gonna get into that in a second, but I'll hold the Alt key and that'll allow me to move my text around and I'll hold control and just zoom out a little bit. And I'll just click off of my text to deselect the text. The next option here is the color box. And obviously as that name suggests, it allows you to change the color of your text. So let me just come over here and click and drag this up to the top left corner. That's going to change my color here to white. And I'll click OK, and now you'll see that our text has this white color and it's a lot easier to read. The next option is the justify option. So this just determines how your text is justified within the text box or how it's aligned. So you have the standard left justify, right justify, centered, or filled. So if this is a fixed text box, so right now this is dynamic, so let me just click and drag the text box out a little bit like so. So you'll see that with this set to justify center, this is automatically gonna center our text within the text box. So it's not centering our text to the entire composition, it's only centering it to the text box. And then I can left justify it or right justify it. And then the fill option is only gonna work really when you have a paragraph in there. So let me just click this back to center. And let me come back over here to my layers panel. And then I'm also gonna come over here to my alignment tool and I just wanna align my text so it's in the center of my image. So I'll click on that text box there and then I'm going to click to align this to the center and I'm gonna do that again so now this is horizontally and vertically centered to our image. And then I'll come back over here to my text tool. So the next option is to indent the first line and we're gonna go over that once I import a paragraph into here. But then the next option here is to increase the space between two lines of text. So let me click on my text again and just expand my text box a little bit here. And then I'm gonna click on here, hit the enter key. And with my caps lock key on, I'll just type a second line again. So GIMP tutorials. And actually, let me just change the text box here to dynamic. So that's going to fit our text box to the size of our text. So if I come over here to the option that allows me to adjust the spacing between the two lines of text, if I increase this, you'll see our text will become more spaced apart. So our two lines of text are now more spaced apart. Or if I turn this down so you can make this a negative value, it'll bring our text lines closer together. And then our next option here is to adjust the letter spacing. This is also called kerning. So when I'm adjusting the letter spacing, if I increase it, it's just increasing the spacing between our letters. And if I decrease it, it is going to decrease the spacing between our letters. I'm just gonna set this to zero and same with the letter spacing here, I'll set that to zero. And then let me just come over here and realign this. So I'm just going to align this back to the center. And if I grab my text tool again, there is actually a shortcut key if you want to increase the letter spacing or the line spacing. So if I just select all my text here and hold the Alt key and I use my up arrow, you'll see that is going to increase the line spacing here. So I'm just holding the up arrow right now and you'll see that our letters are getting more spread apart or our lines are getting more spread apart, sorry. And now if I use the left or right keys on my keyboard, so if I go to the right, it's going to increase the letter spacing. And if I go to the left, it's going to decrease my letter spacing. So again, I'm holding the Alt key and using the arrow keys on my keyboard. And I'm just gonna reset this back to zero. So the next option here is the box option. And this is what we've been going through throughout this entire tutorial, which is the ability to change this from a dynamic box to a fixed text box. So again, if this is set to a fixed text box, the text box is going to be a fixed width and height versus dynamic, which is just going to fit to the text size. The next option here is the language option. That actually does not really work as intended, at least in my experience. So if I select this and I just set it to English, this should allow you to basically just have all your lettering show up as it would in the English language. And you're supposed to be able to change this to different languages. So if I type like an M for example, you'll see all the languages that start with an M that are within GIMP. It could just be my lack of knowledge about other languages, but I haven't noticed any difference between any of the other languages and the English language within GIMP. So I'm just gonna set this to English. You can make most of the same changes using the text toolbox here that I alluded to at the beginning of the tutorial. So here you can change the font and you do have to manually type the font here. So I'll just type Arial for example again and that'll change this font to Arial. And also quick reminder, you do have to have all the text selected when you're using this option up here. I'm just gonna change this back to that agency font we were using. You can also change the size of the text, the units that you're using to determine the size. Then you have the ability to change the baseline of the selected text, which is just a fancy way of saying the line spacing. And then you can also adjust the kerning here, which is another way of saying the letter spacing. 
You can also adjust the color of your text within this text box. So I'll click OK there and you'll see that'll change our color. I'm just gonna change this back to white. And then you also have some new options over here which allows you to make the font more bold. If your font isn't already bold like this font is, you can make it italicized. You can also underline the text and you can strike through the text. If I click this option here, it's going to clear the styles that we added to this text. So you'll see all of those styles disappear there. So as you guys saw me doing earlier in the tutorial, you can move your text box around with the text tools still selected by holding the Alt key and that just allows you to move this text wherever. You can also come over and use the move tool. So if I grab the move tool, you'll see this will actually give us a little bit better of a picture as we are moving this around. So it kind of moves it around in real time and that just makes it easier to see where you're moving this text to. You do have to be clicked on the character itself. So you have to be clicked on one of the letters in your text in order to move the text. If you click anywhere else, it's going to move whatever layer is behind it. So in this case, the background layer. So I'll hit Control Z. That's a big problem beginners have. They're trying to move the text box around and they're clicked inside the text box, but it's moving whatever layer is behind it. And that's because you have to be on a character in order for that text to move. I'm gonna go back to my text tool and click on my text box to make it active for my next feature. So when I right click on here, you'll see there's a menu that pops up. This is called the text context menu. So there's several options here. The first four are your standard cut, copy, paste, and delete options. And so for example, if I highlight this Davies text, right click and go to cut, it'll cut that out. And then if I come over here to the end, right click and paste, it'll paste that there. Let me undo that though. So I'll right click again to bring up that text context menu. So the next option here is to open a text file. And this is actually really useful because if you have a bunch of text that you've already typed up that you wanna bring into GIMP, you can use this option to bring in that text that you created all at once. So you don't have to come in here and manually retype all that text. So for example, let me just delete all of this text and I'm going to change the size and everything of my text. So I'll change the size to 12. Let's say I'm going to change the font back to Arial and I'll just keep the color set to white here. And now let's say I want to click and drag this to create a text box so that it's only on the left side of my image. So now we have our fixed text box here. And if I right click and go to open text file, so I have a text file that I created in advance. It's lorem ipsum text, which is just like dummy text. It's a pretty industry standard way of using dummy text to fill in a text area. But you'll notice this is a .txt file. In my research, this was the only file type that works. So if you're trying to use a Word file or something, it's not gonna work. Just save it as a .txt file using something like Notepad. So anyway, I'll hit open. And you can't see it right now really because the color of the text here is actually uh, shown up as my foreground color. So let me just change this color to white and I'll click OK. And so here is all the text that was in that text document. And I can of course increase the font size if I want. So here is all of that paragraph text. I can of course go in here and manually just add a space between the lines here or between the paragraphs. And I'll just shrink that text down a little bit. So now you'll see we have many paragraphs that we brought in here all at once. It saved us a bunch of typing that we would have had to do if we wanted to uh, manually bring all this text into GIMP. And while I have all this text in here, let me also just demonstrate uh, this feature right here, which is the ability to indent the first line of text in each paragraph. So let me also just bring the justify over here to the left. And if I increase this value here, you'll see each of the first lines of our paragraph text here is now indented and it's indented by 50 right now. I can just continue to increase that or of course I can reset that back to zero. But actually I'm gonna bring this up to 50 because I do like having that first line indented. And I can also come over here and fill all of this in so you'll see that when I do that now with this paragraph text, it is now filling up our entire text box with the text and that's usually what people use when they have a newspaper or a magazine and they need to fill in a certain space with the text. And that just gives this text box a cleaner look now. So let me right click on this now to bring up our text context menu again. So the next option here is the clear option and this will clear all of your text within your text box. So when I click on that, you'll see now all of our text is gone. And now that I've done that, let me just bring this back to zero so that our text that we bring in here won't be indented by default. And I'm also gonna reset the justify here to centered. And I'm gonna change my text box back to a dynamic text box. I'm gonna increase my font back to 200 here. 
and also change the font to agency again. And with my caps lock key on, I'm just going to retype my title text here and then grab my alignment tool and recenter this up. And I'll grab my text tool again and click on our text box and I'm gonna right click on here. So our next option within the text context menu is the path from text option. So if I click on that, what that's going to do is create a path that's going to outline our text. And you can't see it right now because the path is hidden. But if I come over here to our paths dialog, you'll see there's a path created here called Davies Media Design and that's because it is the shape of our text layer that we created. So if I unhide that, you'll see our text now has this sort of red outline going around it. That's the path that was created. So the cool thing about this, if I come back over here to my layers panel, and let me actually just delete this duplicate text layer that we had going on there. But if I create a new layer and I name this text outline, and let me turn my caps lock key off, fill this with transparency and click okay. And come back over here to my paths dialog box here. What I can do is I can click on this path layer, click the stroke option here, and it's going to stroke this with a solid color uh, if I have the stroke line option checked and the solid color option checked here or selected. Um, I can set the line width of the stroke that's going to go around the outside of our letters. And I can also click this drop down here and change the style. I'm not going to get too much into that right now. But the stroke that's going to be created is going to be whatever your color is set to here, your foreground color. So if I click on this and change this to black, for example, it should stroke our text with that black color now. So I'll hit stroke, and if I hide this path, you'll see now our text has a stroke going around it. And if I come back over here to my layers panel, the text outline layer is the layer that took on that stroke. So if I hide that, now you can no longer see it, and that just gives us some options there. So that's just one example of what you can do with the path from text option. And I'm just gonna delete that text outline layer now, and then I'm gonna click on my text box layer, right click again. So the next option here is text along path. So a good example of when you wanna use this option is when you draw a curve with the paths tool, and then you wanna put your text on that curve. So let me come over here and grab my Ken Brewer paths tool, and this is named after our diamond Patreon supporter, Ken Brewer. So let's say I click over here, and then I click over here to create two nodes, and then I'll create a curve. So this is creating a curved path, and I have an entire tutorial on the paths tool, so definitely check that out if you wanna learn more about how to use the paths tool. But now if I come over here to our paths layer, you'll see this is our curved path, and we can just name this curved path. Hit enter, and I can unhide this path now. And let me grab my text tool. So we have this curved path. If I click on my text, and then I right click, and I go to text along path, you'll see now our text has been redrawn as a path, and it's going along this curve here. And if I wanted to make this text white text again, I can come over here, create a new layer, and we'll name this curved text. Click OK. We can come back over to our paths tool, and if I click on this path, you'll see all the nodes that are created. Uh, we don't need to get into that right now, but what I can do is I can change the foreground color to white, click OK, and then just come over here and click fill path, and choose solid color as my option. This is going to use our foreground color here, click fill, and now that curved text has been filled in with that white. So I can grab a different tool to get rid of all those nodes there. I can also come over to my paths dialog and hide that path and also hide the curved path. And now that's our final text drawn on a curved path. I'm going to come back over here to my layers panel and I'm just going to delete this curved text layer. And I'm going to grab my text tool again and click on my text box and right click to bring up that text context menu. So you'll see the next options here all have to do with the orientation of your text. So right now this is set from left to right and that is just standard western writing. You can also do right to left if you're typing in a language such as I think Arabic types right to left. So if you're typing in a language that types right to left, I'll hit my enter key and let me hit the justify to the left option. So even though I have this justified to the left, you'll see our text is still coming over here from the right. And if I type GIMP tutorials, that text again is coming from over here because we do have that option set here. So the justify option will be the opposite when you have this set to right to left. And of course, if you click the center justify option, it'll still just center this in the image. 
So I'll right click on here. You'll see there are four other orientation options and they're all vertical. So vertical text is a feature that was added in GIMP 2.10. So these are all just different. You've got right to left mixed orientation, right to left upright orientation, and then you have those same two options, but left to right. These just have to do with how the words or the individual letters are orientated when this is uh, vertical text. So if I click on that first option here, it's almost just like rotating that text 90 degrees. So let me grab my move tool and just move this over here. So now our text is vertically written, but the individual characters themselves are orientated so that they're turned 90 degrees. So it's just like writing again with the text box rotated. I'm gonna grab my text tool again, right click on here. The next option is right to left with upright orientation. So this is going to create upright letters here. And I believe this is common in Eastern languages. So there's some languages where you're gonna write vertically. And then if I right click on here, the other two options are again the same thing, except you're typing left to right instead of right to left. So that's what those two options do. I'm gonna right click on here and go to left to right again. That's just gonna reset this back to the standard text orientation. Grabbing my text tool again, clicking on our text box and right clicking. The last option here is input methods. This option allows you to change the language inputs of your keyboard. So this is more so important for people who type in another language other than English. All right, so that's it for the text context menu. A Couple other things I wanna point out here. For one, the layers menu option here has a couple text options. So you've got discard text information. And what that's going to do is it's going to convert your text layer just to a normal layer. So when I click on that, you'll see our text layer here in the layers panel is now just a regular layer. This can be useful if you wanna treat your text like a graphic. The only problem with it is that right now with my text selected, if I try to click on this text and edit it again, it's not going to recover any of that text information. So that text information will be gone. So let me just hit Control Z to undo that. And then the other two options in here are to text to path and text along path, which we just went over a little bit earlier. So I'm not gonna go over that again. So speaking of that discarded text information, something important to know about that. So let's say you have your text here and let me actually delete the second line of text. So we just have the one line and then I'm just going to align this to the center of our image. So we've been working this whole time with text layers, which has allowed us to come in here at any point with the text tool and edit our text, which involves changing the size of the text, changing the font of the text, the color, etc. But you can also add effects to your text using a variety of filters found in GIMP. The issue with that is that anytime you apply an effect to a text layer, it's going to convert that text layer to a normal layer. So it is going to, in a way, discard that text information. So let me demonstrate that for a second. So I'm going to come over here to my filters, go to light and shadow, and then drop shadow. So this is going to add a drop shadow to our text. I can adjust how far the offset is of the shadow. So I don't want the offset to be too high. So I'm gonna turn it down a bit. I can also adjust the opacity of this so I can make it a little bit darker by increasing the opacity or a little bit lighter by decreasing it. So go with about right there and I'll click okay. So now our text has this drop shadow on it, but if I come over here, my text layer is now gone and this is converted to a normal layer. You can actually bring that text information back and re-edit this text if you really need to. You can come over here to your text tool and when you click on this text that now is a regular layer that has effects on it, you're gonna get this box that pops up that says confirm text editing. And basically what this is saying is that in order to edit your text, you have to discard any of the effects that you've applied to this text now that has caused it to convert to a regular layer. Or you can create a brand new text layer altogether, which is just going to basically duplicate your original text onto a new text layer. So let me just demonstrate that real quick. So if I click create new layer, now we have our text layer back again and it doesn't have any of the effects on it. So if I hide my layer that had the drop shadow on it, you'll see this text no longer has that drop shadow. And now I can come back here with my text tool and re-edit this text. So let's say maybe I wanna change the color of this font to maybe that purple there. I'll just go with this purple and I'll unhide that text layer. So that text layer below is still there and you can kind of see it creeping through there. You see some of the white creeping through. So that's one of the downsides of that option. So let me just delete that text layer there. And I'm gonna start over, so I'll grab my text tool, make sure I'm clicked on this Davies Media Design layer. Click on this, and our other option is to click Edit. So when I click Edit, it's going to get rid of all of my drop shadow that I put on there, so all the effects I have on this layer. So I'll click Edit, and now that drop shadow is gone, and it's not on a duplicated layer, it's just reverted this text layer back to its original state. And once again, I can come in here and edit this, change the color, the size, the font, whatever. So I'll hit Control Z to undo that. That'll bring up my effects again. 
One important thing to note is that your effects are going to be cut off by the layer boundary size. So right now, the size of our layer that this text is on is denoted by the black and yellow outline here. So if I zoom in here, the shadow that we added here is being cut off by this layer right here. So one way we can prevent that is we can increase the size of our layer boundary. So if I hold control and zoom out with my mouse wheel, click on this layer to convert it back to a regular text layer, and then go to layer, layer boundary size. I can always increase the width and height of my layer boundary. So here you'll see how much this is increasing. If I hit the center option, it'll center that within our new layer width. And I can also increase this. So let's say I want to increase the height to 500. So now that gives us a lot more room below and I'll hit resize. So there is our new layer boundary size. So now if I go to filters, light and shadow, drop shadow, the drop shadow no longer gets cut off by the layer boundary there. And I'll just click OK. You can also just make the layer boundary the same size as your composition by going to layer, layer to image size. And now the size of our layer with the text on it is the same size as our composition. All right, so that's it for this tutorial. Hopefully you guys enjoyed it. If you did, please subscribe to my YouTube channel at youtube.com slash Davies Media Design. You can visit our website at DaviesMediaDesign.com. You can enroll in our best-selling GIMP photo editing course from beginner to pro photo retoucher on Udemy. And you can support our channel and help us grow by becoming a patron on Patreon. And I'll include a link to that as well as all the relevant links from this tutorial in the description of the video. So thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.